Okay, let's continue. And again, we want to find the LCD for each. And we'll kind of step it up a little bit. We'll look at some more challenging problems, but still pretty easy. So let's say I had 7 over 3x. And let's say we had 2 over x squared minus 5x. And I want to find the LCD here. So again, the first step is always to factor each denominator. So I'm going to factor those two guys right there. And let's see what we get when we do that. Well, 3x is basically just 3 times x. 3 times x. And then if I think about x squared minus 5x, the way that I'm going to factor that is I'm going to pull an x out. So this is going to be what? Let me just kind of change colors here. I'll put x times x minus 5. So now it's a little bit different than we've kind of seen in the past, but really it's the same concept. Okay. When we build our LCD, what we want to do is we want to list each different denominator factor, again, the greatest number of times it appears in any of the denominators, and then we're just going to kind of multiply that together. So I have a 3 that occurs, and I don't have a 3 over here in this factorization, so I know I'm going to have one 3 in the LCD. I have an x that occurs here, and I have an x that occurs over here. Don't pay any attention to this x and the x minus 5 because the x minus 5 is a factor. This whole thing, this is something you have to realize, this whole thing right here is a factor. Okay, the factor is x minus 5. It's not x and then negative 5 because people get confused on that. This right here is an x that's multiplying x minus 5, so this is a factor. Okay, so your two factors here are x and then x minus 5. So we have an x that occurs in this 3 times x here, and then we have an x that occurs in the x times x minus 5 or x squared minus 5x. So in my LCD when I'm building it, I'm going to have 1x in it, and then I have an x minus 5. That's another factor. So then I'll have x minus 5. And then basically I'm just going to multiply these guys together. Now, when we're working with rational expressions, a lot of times you're just going to leave it like this. Your LCD will just be listed as 3x times x minus 5. But it's perfectly acceptable to go through and, you know, use the distributive property and say, okay, well, this is 3x times x, that's 3x squared, and then minus 3x times 5, which would be 15x. So either way you want to list it, the answer is going to be 3x times x minus 5 or 3x squared minus 15x. But I think as you kind of move forward, this is going to be what you want to use because it makes it a little easier when you're trying to reduce stuff, and you're going to see that later on. Okay, let's look at one that's a little tougher. Let's say you had 6 over x squared minus 4x minus 5, and let's say you had 9 over x squared minus x minus 20, and then lastly, let's say we had 2 over x squared minus 10x plus 25. Okay, So again, this, the procedure is the same. I'm going to factor each denominator completely. And so what am I going to get? Well, x squared minus 4x minus 5. Pretty easy to factor all these because the coefficient on the x squared is 1 in each case. So if I think about this, I need two integers. This will be x and this will be x. I need two integers that multiply out to be negative 5 and sum to negative 4. So right off the top of my head, I can think about what? Negative 5 and plus 1. Negative 5 and plus 1. Negative 5 times 1 is negative 5. Negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4. So x minus 5, x plus 1. Next, we're going to factor this over here, x squared minus x minus 20. And again, it's easy because the coefficient on the x squared is 1. So two integers that would multiply to be negative 20 and sum to negative 1, I think about negative 5 and positive 4. Negative 5 times 4 is negative 20. Negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. So x minus 5, x plus 4. Okay, then the last one here to factor is x squared minus 10x plus 25. So x here and x here, and then two integers that are going to multiply to be 25 
and sum to negative 10. So that one's really easy. That's negative 5 and negative 5. Negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. Negative 5 plus negative 5 is negative 10. So x minus 5, x minus 5. So this to us at this point, when we kind of look at this to build our LCD, looks a little unfamiliar. But again, if you just kind of think your way through it, if you kind of follow the procedure, it's really not very difficult. Again, you want to use each different factor the greatest number of times it appears. So if I look through here, I've got an x minus 5. I've got an x minus 5 here. And then I've got x minus 5 times x minus 5. So the greatest number of times that x minus 5 appears is twice, right? It appears twice here, two times. So guess what? In my LCD, I'm going to have x minus 5 times x minus 5, or I can put x minus 5 squared. Either way you want to do that. I think for the purpose of this lesson, I'm going to keep it simple and put x minus 5 times x minus 5, okay? Now, the next prime factor that we have and that occurs only in this prime factorization for this x squared minus 4x minus 5. It doesn't occur anywhere else, so I just throw one copy of that in here, so times x plus 1. And then finally, we have this x plus 4 here. And the same situation, right? It only occurs in the prime factorization for x squared minus x minus 20. And so I throw one copy of that in here, okay? So my LCD will be x minus 5, times x minus 5, or x minus 5 squared, times x plus 1, times x plus 4. So you can see why in the last one I kind of just left it like this and I said this is kind of the preferred method. I'm not going to go through and multiply all this stuff out. If you want to, you can have fun with that. But I think in most cases, almost everybody's going to leave it in this format because for one, you get to skip the multiplication, which is very tedious. And the second thing would be, makes it easier to cancel or reduce if you need to. And you're going to see that in the upcoming lessons.